Thank you all very much for joining us today, uh, especially everyone who's here virtually. Um, let's just get, let's just start into this. COVID-19, IoT solutions, an Asia Berlin perspective. What do we mean by that? If there's one thing that binds us all now, I'll bet it's our experience with COVID. And my hope is that this goes beyond just binding us together. I hope this unifies us to find solutions for this pandemic. So I'm gonna share something personal because it's a very personal experience. My experience with COVID and your experience with COVID. And how does this combine with IoT? We'll weave that in as well. So today we're going to start with a definition of IoT. The reason we need a definition of IoT is there are more flavors of IoT than good gelato you will find in an ice cream shop here in Berlin. So we're going to define IoT and agree on that. Then what we're going to do is, uh, where were you during this whole COVID pandemic? We're going to do a little time machine exercise just to frame you know, what were you experiencing during COVID? And then uh, what were the responses? And the responses lead to solutions. So we're going to describe some solutions. And uh, then we're going to finish up with what's next, which is going to be a call to action. So let's go to IoT. Let's get this going quickly. You can read that. But what do we describe IoT? Is IoT just widgets connected to the internet? I'd like to go beyond that definition and think of IoT as the next level of computation. IoT is ubiquitous computing. It's not just a widget connected to the internet. And my favorite definition that really describes what IoT is and what encapsulates the vision of IoT is two words. It's from Jessica Grootman, Digital Physical. I urge you, look her up. She is an amazing expert in IoT. You read anything she posts, guaranteed, you will be a lot smarter. But now let's go back to history, right? We're going we're to talk about COVID. So September, right? Uh, just a second. Sorry about that. What is the world like for you today, September 21, right? As I'm looking at this crowd, we have a large crowd virtually, but it's empty. People are wearing masks, right? Is this what your world's like today? That we're having a hybrid event. Okay, our world has changed. Now, I want to have a little bit of a time machine, right? What was it like on this day for you last year? What were you doing? Me, I was just doing some inconsequential business stuff. I'm sure that was the same with you. So think about what can happen in a year. Or many of my German friends were probably enjoying a wonderful uh, Oktoberfest down in München. People should be drinking beer in beer gardens now, but that's not happening. And that was happening last year. Now let's just move back in time a little bit and we're gonna go to March because that's really when this pandemic unfolded for most of us around the world. What was your march like? I'm going to introduce this by being a little personal. How did I learn about COVID? How did it affect my family? And what was the transition? I got an email from school. And I was told that there was someone exposed at the school that my kids go to. Next thing I know, my kids are at home. OK? Next thing my family knows, school is canceled. Two months later, we're still in our house. And to this time, we're still recovering from that trauma. So I'm sharing something personal. COVID hit us hard. But we'll get to solutions. So what happened during this panic? There were responses. Immediately, we had responses to COVID. OK, and most of these responses manifested as hackathons because people wanted to fight back against this invisible, hostile enemy. But what do you do? I mean, do you go out on the streets? What do you fight? You need to fight with your mind. You need to fight with other people. So that's where hackathons came in. And we had hackathons all around the world. But since this is Asia Berlin, I'd really like to focus on one hackathon at the beginning. Not really focus, but let you know. Germany heated this call 
And there was such a massive hackathon that erupted overnight in Germany. I think there were 50,000 participants. It was so big, it broke slack. Okay? And then what happened at the same time? Personally, I received a phone call from someone saying, hey, what are you going to do about COVID? And I said, oh, I'd like to join a hackathon. Four days later, thanks to the wonderful team from Data Natives, we organized a hackathon. And we had a few thousand people there. These efforts were happening globally. And solutions were coming from these efforts. And that's what I'd like to get into, because these hackathons were wellsprings of innovation, full of motivated people trying to develop a solution, not singularly, but together. And so now, I'd like to show you some solutions. These are not all necessarily from hackathons. You have to understand that the response to COVID, at least for me personally, was this massive innovation effort. People were looking for a way to solve this problem and were not waiting for someone else to solve it. So this is one solution, and it's from a company here in Berlin. See, they were making a telepresence robot, and then this, this crisis hit. And this comes from Thinghouse, Berlin-based Berlin, Berlin -based company. So what they did is they've taken a telepresence robot and optimized it. Why would you need to optimize a telepresence robot? Why do you need one during this pandemic, even right now? Because old people stay at home. Because people at risk stay at home. And they need to have companionship. They need to be helped. But what are we supposed to do with the nurses? We need the nurses on the front lines addressing COVID. Hence, a robotic solution for COVID. And so this team, I think they'll be presenting at one of the pitch events. Definitely check them out because they're highly innovative. They built this during the epidemic and they're deploying it now. I'd like to share another solution since this is Asia Berlin. This is from our friends in Thailand. So in Thailand, they, you know, it was devastating in time. A country that relies on tourism and to have all of this shut down overnight. Well, there's a lot of significant deep technology capability in Thailand. And the Thais, they didn't stop just like everyone else in the world. They got up and they found solutions. So these, I'm very fortunate to have worked with KMUTT. This is the equivalent of Teu Munchen in Thailand, the top technical university, and they immediately, hey, we have to find a solution. So what is this autonomous mobile robot? How do you take care of 100 people infected with COVID in a ward without risking your precious doctors and nurses? How do you feed them? How do you send medicine? You use a robot like the one developed from FIBO, from Kun Supachai. Excuse me, he's a colleague of mine. Kuhn is a term of respect that you use when you address someone from Thailand. My apologies. So this robot, they were using it for dispensing pharmaceuticals. And they completely pivoted in a week. And these are in the hospitals now in Thailand. And if you want a great place to test a medical IoT product, go to Thailand. Their hospitals are amazing. They embrace innovation. And the patient care is top notch. But now let's get back to Berlin. So if you're one of the few that flew here, I'm sure you have some familiarity with Centigene, right? That's part of the, that's when you go into the airport, that's how you get your Corona test. Centigene, they're in Berlin. On a personal note, okay, I had to use that test. The reason I'm able to present here in front of you is because I took the test and I'm clear and my family's clear. How did that change like that? Interesting. Sorry about that. So um, that's why I'm showing you what the kit looks like. So this is just beyond marketing. I had to use this. And this Centigene kit, I got it in 24 hours. I got the results in 24 hours. But why am I including this with blockchain, right? Or IoT, excuse me. Well, I'm including it with IoT because their partner U Birch has developed a blockchain solution that is bound to these tests. This is the technology behind the German Corona passport, right? Their blockchain solution, which makes it really IoT friendly, fits on a SIM card. In fact, for geeks like me, I'm able to include it in the code for my Edge devices. So, 
there's an IoT solution from Berlin. Now let's go back to Thailand. Um, innovation doesn't just come from startups. True digital is about as big as you can get in Thailand. And they rose to the challenge, right? So how do you determine how crowded an area is while respecting privacy? And this is the key. It's one thing to place a camera in a public area and start counting faces. That's not respecting privacy. So what True Digital did, because they're a telco and they also have a very strong AI department, probably the best in Southeast Asia, I'll say that because I've worked with them and I've seen the algorithms and the hyperparameters and what they're developing, really a sharp team, they decided to develop a technology that would assess how large crowds are without personal, identifi personal identifiers. And they merged this data with the Thai Health Department. So the Thai authorities can get real-time alerts if a place is crowded with people via heat, heat maps so they can take real-time action. And that's without identifying anyone. Now let me add something else about this solution. True Digital said, Mike, tell people about this. So I'm telling people about this because they're offering it for free to any telco that wants to explore how to use this type of technology to identify crowds in a personal privacy respecting manner. But I think it's time for another Berlin solution. Or are we gonna do another Thai? I think we're gonna do another Thai solution. And this again comes from KMUTT and FIBO. So you have to remember during COVID, right? If you get ventilated, if you're one of those poor souls that gets ventilated, you're laying in a bed for two weeks. Now, if you're normally a healthy person, you really don't think about the consequences of laying in bed for two weeks or longer. The consequences are bed sores, and that will kill you. So how do you address with this? Do you put more medical staff in a hospital to fix this problem, or do you rely on technology to save the precious people? Well, their solution was to rely on technology. So in, in two months, this went from talking to working in the hospital. And the IoT component, of course it's generating data, right? In order to determine what optimal schedules are for specific patients to know when should I roll them over, should I check for bed sores, right? So remember, this came from hackathons. All of these efforts, if not directly inspired, were tangentially inspired by hackathons because everybody was energized to develop a solution. But now I think I'd like to go to the Berlin solution. And this is what I'd like to end with technically. Now we have a lot of people working on COVID solutions, but what I'd like you to think of is what if it was as easy to take a COVID test as it is to brush your teeth in the morning? There's this Berlin company called Midge Medical and they developed this solution, right? And it works in minutes. And you can have it in your bathroom. You can have it right next to your toothbrush. This came from hackathons. This came from the efforts of solving coronavirus problems. And it's available here in Berlin now. But how do we bridge this with Asia? Just by mentioning a couple of Thai providers and a couple of Berlin providers, how are we making a bridge for this IoT solutions, a COVID perspective? Well, my friends, the bridge is you, everyone here is the bridge. Everyone here is how we make this an Asia Berlin solution. So COVID touches everything and everyone. So it's an equal opportunity problem for us in Berlin and in Asia. So the solution, what I'm asking you is that we must work together and we must leverage these combined ecosystems of Asia and Berlin. So please take this event and meet people. If you're interested in developing solutions for COVID, if you're interested in expanding what you're doing with IOT to help humanity, then meet people here, talk about it. There are so many brilliant people here that are ready to help you shape a solution. And then the last one I wanna say is that we can and we will are going to overcome COVID. My vision, and I hope your vision is the same, is that next year we're crowded. Next year, I'll get to see one of my colleagues like Aravind and actually be able to give him a hug. 
okay? And say, wow, we made it through this, this ordeal. And that's all I've got right now. Thank you for watching, and I hope, uh, I hope you found this uh, entertaining and enlightening.